Hey, community, we're back, and I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community MP. And together we are BNB, the community MPs. Okay, Brandy, so let's go ahead and get started. What, what are we going to be discussing today? So today we're going to be discussing deep vein thrombosis or DVTs, or since most is blood clots, okay? Yeah. So we're going to start off with that today, and then we're going to break it down further to go into PEs, which is pulmonary embolisms, mm -hmm. and DVTs in pregnant women. So we're going to do like a little series of these talks, because I think it's a very important topic. Well, all the topics are important, but I wanted to break this one down a little bit more. Yeah, because it happens right, so, in a, I was just going to say, ahead. we're breaking it down because it happens in a lot of different situations. And once it develops, it can travel and cause different problems, so... We're going to go into detail. It can be deadly. Oh, so, for sure. yes, deadly. So be, tell, tell everybody what's a DVT. What is DVT? So basically, it's a condition that occurs when a blood clot forms in a vein that is located deep in the body. So usually, most commonly, it's in, in the legs, in the vessels of the legs. Basically, what a blood clot is, is like a clump of blood, um, either gelatinous or in a solid state. Okay. Okay. So what are, what are some facts? How's this affecting the U.S.? So, okay, it's, um, it's, uh, it's estimated that six, 60,000 to 100,000 Americans die of a D, DVT or a PE yearly. Um, die? No. 10 to 30, 10 to 30% of people who die, they die within one month of being diagnosed. Oh my goodness. So that's very scary. So I wonder why, like, is it because um, not taking medications, not taking it seriously? Um, you know, that's a lot. 10 to 30 percent die within a month. After well, I don't know. But, you know, one fourth of them die off jump. So, like, they don't even their first symptom is uh, death. Yeah. So, that, yeah. So that's kind of scary. Um, among people who had a DBT, like you said, um, one third to half of them have long-term complications, such as they may have pain at the site, they may have swelling, even so that the discoloration of their skin, like the skin may look scaly. Yeah. So that can also, that's a, a one fact also. And one third of people with DVTs or PEs have had a recurrence within 10 years. So, you know, you having one puts you at risk of having another DVT or a, a P, which is a pulmonary embolism. And I think a lot of it, maybe the reoccurrence has a lot to do with the lack of education. You know what I mean? The lack, they're not taking their medicine. Maybe it wasn't explained to them like how serious it is. And so, you know, they don't take care of themselves. So I see a lot, when I see, I see a lot of people who get discharged from the hospital, Brandy, mm -hmm. and they was in a hospital for a DVT. Um, well, they'll come, a blood clot, they had a blood clot. They'll tell me they had a blood clot and, oh, they gave me this medicine, but I stopped taking it because I finished it. Or I didn't know I had to keep taking it because I wasn't taking it before I went to the hospital. Right. And I think that the education, discharge education, so come in to see your primary care provider. I think it's something's going on in that process from the discharge education to your primary care provider. They're losing something in that, that um, area. So, yeah. A lot of, uh, in a lot of conditions, the transition of care is is lacking and so a lot of people don't you know get the care that they need or they're not i think part of it is they're not seen soon enough so you know in the hospital they expect oh follow up with your primary care provider they're probably thinking in like a week or two these That's people true. may not be able to get into the to see us for like six to eight weeks or something That's whether true. It's, whether it's because we don't have openings or COVID or just whatever, whatever the situation is. And then, you know, they give you a 30 day supply of medicine. You run out before you see your primary care provider. And then the ball is dropped. That is so true. So I know that a couple of insurance companies, they have like a tr transitional care program where they're trying mm -hmm. to ensure that before the patient leaves the hospital, they get that appointment. Yeah. With their primary care. It's not happening all the time, but I see that some of the insurance companies are trying to ensure you know, that the patients have the appointments, well, that's really, which is a good, which is good. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So some common risk factors. So history of immobilization or pro prolonged hospitalization. 
So that just means like you're sitting for a long time or you're in the hospital and you're in the bed for a long time, you're not moving around. Um, so that puts you at higher risk of developing a blood clot. And one of so the- breathing. Yeah. I'm sorry. So when a nurse asks you to get up and let's take a walk or let's move and get out the bed. Do it. This is why. This yeah. is why they're asking you. We have to get you moving. Mm -hmm. You may be, you know, get up and let's take a walk. So this is why. And then, you know, do that at home too. Don't just sit all day in front of the TV and chill. Get up every now and then, walk around, get your blood flowing. But, you know, be one of the most, one of the co more common jobs that have um, high risk of developing a DVT is truck drivers. Because, I didn't know yeah, because they sit for so long um, and they drive and, you know, they, a lot of times they don't want to stop two hours every two hours those guys are trying to get their loads or girls trying to get their loads delivered to wherever they need to be going so hmm. that's interesting Rand. so we probably want to do a class um a, a lecture just to teach truck drivers how to prevent having dvts yeah we should i know a lot of truck drivers okay okay so what else uh, some other common risk factors so recent surgery or trauma Mm -hmm. Typically, within 12 weeks of, of the surgery or trauma, that's when you're at increased risk of developing a blood clot. Obesity, which puts you at risk for everything. <laughs> See, <laughs> Pregnancy or postpartum uh, status. So either you're pregnant or you just had a baby. Stroke, um, hemoplasia, which is uh, weakness or inability to move one side of your body. And then immobility. So some of the other risk factors are increased age, 65 and older, previous uh, DVT or PE in the past, and then malignancy, so any type of cancer, that puts you at increased risk, and then the use of oral contraceptives or hormone replacement therapy. B, tell us a little bit about that, because I know you did, you love OBGYN. I, so. I, 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 I still love GYN, but it's the estrogen that causes, um, that puts you at increased risk for um, developing a DVT. Mm -hmm. I know like my, um, when I would have females who wanted to be on birth controls, especially if they were smokers, mm -hmm. I would definitely stay away from oral contraception, like the progesterone and estrogen pills. Yeah. I would do progesterone only. Like I would do like, um, the Implanine, Nexplanine or, um, Depo. Mm -hmm. Depo was, was my like go-to for those women because the, I knew that it was going to be at increased risk for developing DBTs. Yeah. So that's what I would do. So some other risk factors are also having a family history of a DVT or PE in the past, heart failure and inflammatory bowel disease. I, I think both of us agreed that we should look more into the inflammatory bowel disease and how it, how it causes or how it puts you at an increased risk because I don't know, I can't, I can't grasp it in my brain. My critical thinking. <laughs> trying to figure it out but we'll we'll get back to you guys with that one yeah on um, some signs and symptoms um leg swelling usually it's one leg not both legs but it can be both it can be both that's rare but it can happen one calf may be larger than the other calf mm -hmm. so that can occur um warm that area feels really warm the area is painful it's, it's painful when you walk it's painful when you sit down it's, it's a painful mm -hmm. it's just painful and erythematous it may be a little red Warm yeah. and red. Mm -hmm. So those are some symptoms that signs and symptoms that you need to watch out for with a DVT. So when your patients come in, what do they usually say? My 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 leg hurt. So mm -hmm. one of my patients, I mean, somebody came in probably recently and said that um their lower leg was hurt, like my calf hurt. It hurts in my calf muscle. So you know, I examine just to see if I see any little symptoms. And if you see something mm -hmm. like this, which what we do be send them to the emergency room. Straight to the ER. Because, yeah, because what can happen is their blood clot, what you want to prevent is their blood clot to get dislodged and go to your brain or go to your lung and cause other problems. Right, yeah. So that, that's the whole purpose we're trying to, we don't want that to happen. So it's an emergency room. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so. Let's see. What, what's next? Prevention? Oh no, how's it, how's it diagnosed? So usually, like, so most of the time it can be diagnosed, like, clinically. Like, you can look at it, doing a physical exam, and you can tell, okay, I'm, I suspect a DVT because the symptoms that you're having and with some to the emergency room. 
sometimes patients may come in with a, like a vague, very vague, oh, my leg hurt. And one of the things that I do is an ultrasound. So whenever I want to rule it out, you know, I'm not sure. They're really not symptomatic. But, you know, just to give me peace and a patient peace of mind, I'll go ahead and order ultrasound. Yeah, me too. I'll do ultrasound and, you know, and I'll put to rule out DBT. Mm-hmm. So usually a physical exam, ultrasound, it's very rare that um, our patient, we may do a CT or MRI or get lab to, to, to tell us that the patient has a DBT. That's very rare. Yeah. Usually that's, that's like second, like we, we did an MRI for something else or a CT mm-hmm. scan for something else. But it's so hard to get an MRI or a CT scan these days. Oh, so, <laughs> so, man. So most of the time, you know, we just send them right to the emergency room. You know, yes. that makes me think like we should, we should do a topic on like helping people navigate like their insurance and try and help them figure out, you know, like how to figure out what's covered and how to go about getting the care that they need. Because a lot of times, you know, the people will come and they know that they need something, but they hit like a wall because their insurance is giving them a hard time or they just don't know like even how to call the insurance company and talk to them. Call you right, B. That, that's a good idea. Even to like um our patients who have cell phones, just setting that app on app. Most insurance companies have apps. Mm-hmm. So setting the app on their phone for them so they can go to the app and see. Like you can much find um what cardiologist is in your area that takes the right. insurance. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. That that's a really good idea. Just to do that for the patients. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yes. So, so what are <laughs> I don't know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> So what are some ways to prevent developing a blood clot? Weight loss, of course, um, because like you said, it's common in people who are obese, Mm -hmm. okay? To get the weight loss, you got to exercise. So with everything, we want to exercise. Not staying standing for too long or staying in one spot for too long. Yeah. Getting up, moving around. So if you're taking a, a trip from Dallas to New Mexico, every two hours, you need to be stopping, getting up, moving around. Somebody didn't tell my husband this. So when we take a trip from Dallas to New Orleans, you don't want to stop. I but know. it's important to stop. It's important to stop. Even on plane rides. Usually, you know, most of the rides are probably not more than two hours. But if they are, you need to get up and move around. Mm-hmm. Or move your legs around. Mm-hmm. Just don't stay still, basically. Okay? What are some other prevention techniques? So the compression stockings, which usually, I guess, once you've had one DVT, that you get introduced to compression hose. And then a lot, you know, a lot of nurses wear the compression hose. Um, I don't know. I think primarily to prevent um, varicose veins. Varicose veins. <laughs> yes. but, <laughs> do, can uh, varicose veins lead to developing blood clots? I think so, yes. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So yep. we can dive even deeper and yes. do a topic on that. Wear loose yeah. clothes, drink lots of water, especially when traveling. Avoid estrogen containing medications. That's like what Brandy was saying, birth control. And then, you know, uh, as women get older, when they start going through menopause, they um, start developing like vaginal dryness and uh, hot flashes. So doctors often or providers often will offer estrogen as um, a replacement. But you just got to be careful because, you know, the risk factors now. Yeah. So being proactive about DVTs during hospital hospitalization. So uh, what do they need to do? So if you know that you're, gonna, you're in a hospital, you've been in a bed, what are compression stockings? Mm-hmm. What they call it? SCD holes? Yes. The little compression holes they put on you. Keep them on. Don't take them off. The reason why you have to put them on is they're trying to prevent you from getting a, a deep vein thrombosis, a blood clot, a DVT. Right. So keep them on. I, I can, and I can remember like patients taking them out. Yeah. But keep that's the that's the, the purpose for you to have them to prevent that from occurring. Mm-hmm. And as we said, it can be deadly. It can be deadly. So you definitely have instantly that's can help prevent. Yeah, instantly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get the gold. They don't get the cold, you are. Yeah, yeah, they'll call you, but <laughs> you <laughs> not, not you might not make it. And then you yeah. know, when the nurse or the therapist or the tech comes and it's like oh let's if the doctor wants you to walk especially after surgery get up and walk that prevents you from developing a blood clot yes 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 and also i did read that like oily fish um salmon mackerel tuna trout 
it can lower your risk. And I can see why, because it lowers your risk for high cholesterol, diabetes, all these other um, chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Okay. All right. So how do we treat it? Blood thinners. So yep. also known as anticoagulation medication. Surgery, they may put in a filter, which will help like catch the blood clot that's at the um, bottom of the heart chamber. And so it'll help catch the clot or prevent the clot from traveling throughout your body. And yes. then of course, again, the compression stockings. And I think um, some of the like Walmart convenience stores sell compression stockings now. I know at a point in the time, it was really hard to get them. Mm -hmm. But I think I, I've seen, I think, I, I think I, I, well, I, I know I've seen them in Walmart. To be honest, it's still hard to get them through insurance companies. Yeah, I know. I know. I, so I don't, if anybody out there know how we can get them, let us know. Let us know because, man. It is. It is. I don't know it why is. it's so hard to get insurance companies to pay for stuff that these people need. <laughs> that, that, like, prevent illnesses. But, you know. Insurance. Brandy, you're you going to conquer that um, at a later date. <laughs> I won't even get into it, but you know what? <laughs> so y'all, that's like the overview of um, DVTs, D vein thrombosis. So the goal is just to prevent it. Um, sometimes it can be preventable, especially like if you had surgery or some type of trauma, car accident, you know, you had some type of surgery. It's sometimes it's kind of hard to prevent, but I'm, I, the doctors and nurses try their best to, you know, do what they can do to help prevent it. Mm hmm just follow, you know, the instructions that they give you. And if you get discharged, if anybody gets discharged on blood thinners for whatever <clears throat> reason, take them. Don't stop taking them unless somebody told you to stop taking them. If you run out, get an appointment. Find out if you're supposed to be still taking them. Don't stop taking them. Yes. I tell my patients, if you can't get an appointment, go to the emergency room. If you cannot get an appointment and you not go to the emergency room, mm -hmm. Even so, with their it's sad, but with their blood when with their when you know uncontrolled blood pressure when they run out of their medicines and they've been out of for a while, go to if you can't get an appointment, you go somewhere else and get your medicine. Yeah, until and you're I, able to get an appointment. And I know a lot of times the ER is like, uh, but we don't care. It is their life. If they can't get an appointment and the only way they can get their medicine is to come to the emergency room, that's where they need to go. And I know in healthcare, we're trying to make access a little better. So that's mm -hmm. something that we're working on. So you can get a same day appointment, but it doesn't happen all the time. So right. And a lot of clinics aren't open on the weekends. If you run out or say you lose your medicine or something, and you know your blood pressure is high and you need to be seen, got to go to the B&B said, told me to go and go. Come give my medicine. No, we're really on a serious oh, note. Yeah, for real. Really, because, because we see so many patients who wait months and months. Mm -hmm. Like, no, go get your medicine. Hmm. Yeah. And some, I, you know, I had a patient told me that, like, the pharmacist, like, oh, I'm gonna give you like three or four days, which I appreciate that. Like, mm -hmm. the pharmacist, like, giving them, it was a patient that went to that pharmacist for years, but the pharmacist gave them three or four days a medication until they was able to get in. Yeah. I appreciate that. When we all work together, as a community, then yes. we have a help happier, healthier community. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, B, any disclosures? Yeah, and tell them what it is, B. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we always say, this information is just like I said, information. It's mm -hmm. the spark of conversation between you, your family members, and friends. It does not replace your primary care provider. It does not replace you going see your primary care provider. It's just information to spark conversation, to educate you more on different disease processes. Right. Yeah. So as we always ask of our loyal followers, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all platforms as BNB the Community MPs. And until next time, have a great day. Community is out. Let me tell you something. You cannot forget our model. I'm and sorry. Are, You're right. Is, I'm going to make you say it this time. What is it? Community is our beauty. Why we do this. Because community is our beauty. It is. And yes. you look beautiful today. Oh, it's Black History Month. So the end of Black History Month, you know, I just wanted to do a... Well, I had a bad hair day. That's going to be honest with y'all. But, <laughs> so, but it was a combination. Yeah, so I decided to do like a little cute little look. You know, y'all look at my shirt. I got my... 
nurse practitioner shirt on and my friend. Thank you. Just the creations made for me. And I'm rocking my candy lady cosmetics also with my look. So I just wanted to get cute today. You know. And not um since we're snowed in, gotta get cute for gotta get cute for yourself. But your yes. man's there, so <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. But y'all, y'all take care and we'll see y'all next time. Bye.